Greetings and blessings. I'm Apostle Marquita Brooks, the founder and ministry leader of The Truth in the Spirit. I also lead the Ecclesia Network of Ministries, Kingdom of LLC, the Invitation Movement, and the National Kingdom Council. And the reason I'm coming before you today is because I want to invite you to join me for a convening of the National Kingdom Council on Monday, January 18th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, which is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Now, this is important because you understand the state of our nation. We are in crisis. We are in a, a level of crisis that we've never seen. We're experiencing things that have never been experienced in our lifetime, in our generation. But it's essential that the body of believers unite and come together because all of these things we're seeing must occur prior to our Messiah's return. But what we do in this generation will decide the fate of our nation when it comes to that millennial reign of Messiah. And so I want to invite you to be prayerful and I want to invite you to take action. There's some things that we need to look at and some things we need to discuss to prepare you for being a part of this convening of the National Kingdom Council. In 2020, we experienced again things that we had never seen before. And God used the truth in the spirit and me and many others to react to what we saw and to act in accordance with his will to bring his people and this nation into alignment with him. One of the first things he told me to do was birth the invitation movement, which I did uh, through the truth in the spirit. As soon as we started to see the unrest and the riots in the land, we held healing circles. Um, we've been working toward peace and justice. We've been uniting God's people across lines that divide us. We've been working throughout cities, throughout the nation um, to train in healing, peace and justice to encourage God's people. And we've even moved to online healing services to keep the fire of, of, of God spirit within us during this time are uh, really burning because we're going to need him. We've got to hear from him and we've got to hear from each other. We've been collecting each other's stories. We've been recapturing our narratives and inviting each other into our experiences as we invite God into the cities in our nation. Now, I, I gathered with a, a, a lot of believers during the biblical feast days, the fall feast days this year, and um, we all participated in what was called the return held on September 26th on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., spearheaded by Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn and quite a few others. During this time, we repented on behalf of this nation. We sought God. Um, we asked him to cleanse us and to forgive us and, and really came together as, as the body across this nation, um, whether live or even on simulcast, to really seek God for this nation. Now, there was a group that came together called the 10 Days of Prayer. That's an actual ministry that's existed for quite some time. But they led us in the 10 Days of Prayer for the 10 Days of Awe, from Yom Teruah, which is also known as Rosh Hashanah, unto Yom Kippur. These are the 10 days that um, the children of Israel pray in accordance with the biblical feast for reflection, repentance, meditation, and, pre and preparation for the Day of Atonement. Now, the Lord has told me years ago that Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is really the biblical national day of prayer. So I knew this was essential and that the return was coming right before Yom Kippur and that we were praying from Yom Teruah, the day of sounding the shofar, or also known as Rosh Hashanah, through Yom Kippur for our nation, repenting, seeking God, um, allowing him to minister to us. While I was with this group, this national group that was represented by uh, believers from all over the, the nation, every one of the 50 states was represented in this prayer group. As we were praying, the Lord said to me that I needed to create the National Kingdom Council. I need to gather his people that we would convene the National Kingdom Council. And so I, I heard that in my spirit prior to the return as we were praying in those 10 days. But the day after the return, the very next morning, September 27th, um, as we have been praying and seeking God, the Lord said to me that Sunday morning, my people don't know how to return to me. And when he said my people, he was speaking of the United States. And the reason he said the United States doesn't know how to return to him is because the body of believers has been so divided that a clear standard has not gone forth. So the nation does not know what God requires. The nation doesn't know the standards of our king. That's because of the division in the body of believers. One says this, one says that. We're scattered, we're divided, and the enemy has, has fully infiltrated us spiritually, and we see it even in the natural as well. Now, it was essential when I heard that, um, that, that I received the urgency to convene the National Kingdom Council. So right after the Feast of Tabernacles, we convened for the first time. We convened for seven days straight 
three hours per night, 21 hours in total. And each one of us stood in, in the presence of God, seeking him for his will concerning this nation prior to us coming together. So when we saw him individually, we then came together and we brought what he had spoken to us individually and shared it with each other collectively. We shared the revelation of the Lord strictly from the Bible and then it confirmed by his Holy Spirit and applied to our nation in contemporary times. We sought him and we shared this revelation on seven topics. The founding documents of the United States of America to include, of course, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution and its Bill of Rights, uh, women's rights and abortion, family values and gay rights, race and social equality, foreign policy and immigration, criminal justice and law enforcement, and economics and poverty. Now, as we shared each night on a different topic, um, I recorded what was being released, and then the Lord had me to compile all that he had revealed into one document called the Declaration of Kingdom Standards for the United States of America. Now, this declaration is essential. It is a 36-page document on those seven issues revealing God's kingdom standard for the United States of America at this time based off of his scriptures and his works throughout this nation historically. It's a very important document, um, and the Lord has made it very clear that it could only have been produced through the convening of the National Kingdom Council. That was believers from various backgrounds, ethnicities, ages, educational experiences, um, denominations from throughout different areas in the nation. Like we came together from in, in a diverse uh, group to really share what God had put on our hearts because the scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that we prophesy in part. He gives each one of us revelation, but none of us has the whole picture. It's only when we come together that we can share what God has given us and really sound a clear clarion call out to the nation. That Declaration of Kingdom Standards is exactly um, what God has given us. He's given it to us to sound the clear clarion call to out the nation. Now, after that time, um, the Lord spoke very clearly to me on November 15th of 2020, that at the end of 2020, his grace to this nation would close, or the window of his grace to this nation would close. Now, what that meant is not that God would completely remove his hand from us, but that we would no longer experience the immature grace that allowed us to do whatever we want to do and think that God would still bless us. We would start to feel the consequences of our own sins at the end of 2020. Now, that word sent me into urgency and it sent those who are a part of those ministries that I lead into urgency as well, in particular, the invitation movement. And so literally, um, those of us who are together in the invitation movement, we came together for a national Daniel fast, 21 days seeking God for repentance in this nation. The very first week we repented um, as we reviewed the Declaration of Kingdom Standards for the United States of America, we repented for breaking those standards and we asked the Lord to help realign this nation to those standards. The second week, we actually prayed about seven principalities coming down in this nation. And the third week, we completely addressed the spirit of Babylon coming down in this nation and us being aligned with God's kingdom that he could use us like Daniel in Babylon to be godly counselors and intercessors for our nation's leaders. This National Daniel Fast went from uh, sundown December 10th, which was the beginning of Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, and then it took us all the way through um, midnight, December 31st, of course, which is New Year's Eve. So we prayed all the way through until we hit 2021. Now, this is essential because you guys know what we saw. On January 6th, we started to see things we had never seen before. We've never seen a group of Americans um, in our generation, rush into a national building during the time when the Senate and the House of Representatives is convening to vote on electoral votes um, for our presidency, um, really try to take over the building. We've never seen that before. That is something we've never seen in our nation. Um, and the divisions between political parties and between different groups in our nation, we've never experienced what we're seeing right now in our generation. And this is essential because at the end of that national Daniel fast, the Lord gave me a word. The word of the Lord for his people in the United States of America from 2021 to the millennial reign. And that word actually addressed exactly what we saw on the 6th of January. But it also tells us what we need to do and what we can expect, not just the rest of this year, but all the way until our Messiah returns. The Lord is calling us to action. He's calling us to our assignments. He's calling us to be kingdom ambassadors and godly counselors to our leaders because we have not done so in the past. We have failed to pray for them as the Bible commands that we pray. 
We have failed to give them godly counsel, which is going to speak the truth in love, telling them God's standards, and then holding them accountable to those standards. We failed to do it. And so when we convene on Monday, January 18th, Martin Luther King Jr. Day at 3 p.m. Eastern Time online via Zoom, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to repent. We're going to repent for idolatry because that word that the Lord gave me that I released on January 1st, he actually gave it to me on December 30th and 31st. On January 1st, I released it and also on January 2nd. In that word, he convicts us for idolatry, looking to the leaders rather than looking to him. Particularly, he speaks of idolatry of President Trump, but the reality is he speaks of us being idolatrous as people because it wasn't just president trump that we've idolized we even idolized president obama and you see it in the division and the schisms among god's people which is why when we convene on january 18th um, a reconvening of the national kingdom council the first thing we must do is repent of that because believers who supported president o obama completely um disregarded policies that he, he said he was going to put in place and was faithful to do that were anti-biblical. They were not addressed. They were not discussed. Um, and counsel to him did not address it at all. I'm, I'm talking kingdom counsel. Believers didn't address those things at all. Didn't come out against them um, and didn't come out with a, with a clear standard of what was from God and what was not from God during the Obama administration. The same thing has happened in the Trump administration. We've seen blind support without an address for, you know, uh, the Trump administration actually em emboldening uh, white supremacy in this nation and actually speaking into a lot of the divisions we already experienced. Um, the body of believers has not addressed that at all. There's only been support for the biblical policies, but no addressing of those things that were not biblical that came forth from the administration. And the fact that that happened in two completely polar opposite um, administrations shows us very clearly how divided the body is. But in the Declaration of Kingdom Standards for the United States of America, the Lord calls us at the very beginning out of our political alignments because political parties and those type of affiliations, even denominations, those are constructs of man. They don't exist in the Bible. The Lord is calling us to be kingdom citizens first, which will empower us to be good American citizens. That is what we must do. Throughout 2020, starting early in the year, the Lord said very clear to me, and I shared it with his people, that he is calling his people out of the left and out of the right and into the aisle so that we can meet him at the altar as his bride. See, it's essential that we understand the call upon us at, at this time. We can't be divided by political parties or ideologies anymore because we stand like the accuser of the brethren. That is Satan pointing fingers at each other, pointing fingers at leaders, but not actually being a part of the solution. When we can repent of our own idolatry, our own hypocrisy for, for not keeping the standard clear, regardless of who was keeping it and who was breaking it, when we can repent of that, the Lord can then remove all of that judgment, the bias, the resentment from us. He can heal our souls and he can use us to heal this nation. That's the position we're supposed to be in. We're supposed to be standing like Daniel, who had a heart for Nebuchadnezzar, who ripped Daniel from his homeland and his family, destroyed Judah and Jerusalem. But Daniel not only prayed for Nebuchadnezzar, but he told him the truth in love. When he was doing the will of God, he told him. And when he was not, he told him. And he was faithful to pray. No matter what. The administration changed in Daniel's lifetime so many times. Babylon fell. Persia took over. Daniel was the same faithful intercessor and counselor regardless of who was the king or emperor at the time. See, God's people are being called to be Daniels at this time. Not to be aligned by political parties, but to be able to, to speak the kingdom standards to our national leaders, our state leaders, our local leaders, and to hold them accountable as we ourselves are accountable. We're not above God's standards. In, in fact, we should embody God's standards. And so I want to encourage you, if you've been standing in the divine counsel of the king, listening to his instructions, and you know that there's a part that he has given you that is going to help us heal this nation, I want to encourage you to join us at the National Kingdom Council convening, the second convening of the National Kingdom Council on Monday, January 18th at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Zoom. So you can join us from anywhere in the United States. I want to encourage you to go to nationalkingdomcouncil.org Subscribe to our email list because it's only through that email list that the Zoom link will be 
submit will be distributed. So you've got to be on that email list. Now, I don't send emails through that email list very often. It's only about updates on the National Kingdom Council. And literally, the National Kingdom Council should be comprised of every believer in the nation. But we cannot come to this National Kingdom Council with our emotions, our own ideologies, or political agendas that come from man. We've got to come having listened to the Lord after standing in his divine council and then bringing what the Lord is saying to this National Kingdom Council, the peace that he has given each one of us. Now, this time when we come together, after we repent of this um, idolatry and hypocrisy, we are going to start to share what God is giving us concerning strategies to share the kingdom standards with our local, state, and national leaders. Now, remember, the Lord has already given us the Declaration of Kingdom Standards for the United States of America. We're not going to rewrite that. He did the work. And if you've not read it or watched the video where I read it aloud, please do so at nationalkingdomcouncil.org. You can watch the video there, you can download the PDF, and then sign our petition that national leaders will know that we are behind this kingdom standard and that, that God himself has given it to us. So I want to encourage you to sign that petition, share it with others. <clears throat> but additionally, we want to make sure that we know what God is calling us to in 2020 on 2021 and beyond until our Messiah returns. So I also want to encourage you to read the word of the Lord to his people in the United States of America from 2021 to the millennial reign. If you've not yet read it or watched the video uh, where I share it aloud, I want to encourage you to go to invitationmvmt.org and go to our national fast page. Now, both of the links that I just shared are actually in the description for this video. Click either one of them or go to those um, links to make sure you have, have familiarized yourself with the Declaration of Kingdom Standards for the United States of America and you've read the word of the Lord for his people in the United States of America from 2021 to the millennial reign. Because we've got to be in alignment with kingdom standards. We've got to understand what the Lord is saying and then bring our pieces to the table. The National Kingdom Council must be diverse. It must include believers from all over this nation. It must bring together what God is saying to all of us, but it cannot include our biases, our emotions, our prejudices, our agendas, our issues, our woundedness, or any of the schemes of Satan to destroy this nation. God himself established the United States of America and he will fulfill his purpose for this nation, but his desire is to use us. So we've got to get on our post. We've got to do our job. We've got to stop neglecting the things of God, put down our wicked ways and all the ways of man and the schemes of the enemy, repent before God, allow him to heal us, and then we can be used in the healing of this nation. I pray that you'll join us. Again, go to nationalkingdomcouncil.org so you can subscribe to the email list, receive the Zoom link, and join us on Monday, January 18th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time via Zoom, which is MLK Day, that we can continue the work that Dr. King and so many others who came before us in this nation began for healing and unity and really to fulfill God's vision for these United States. We want to do the will of God in this nation. And the truth is, it will take all of us. If there's only one group of us, if there's only one denomination or, or, or one gender or one ethnic group represented, we're not going to see the fullness of the will of God. But we hold each other accountable. We sharpen each other. And we've got to work together because we are a family, one family in God. I pray that that blesses you and it challenges you and that we'll see you on January 18th in the second convening of the National Kingdom Council. Be blessed.